Let's bring in Bonson Group founder, managing partner, and chief investment officer, David Bonson. It's always great to have you, David, especially on a day like today. So from what we're seeing, it doesn't look like Bidenomics is going anywhere under the Harris administration. You've got Gene Sperling uh, coming aboard. And with this new pick for vice president, Tim Walls, um, you know, he doesn't exactly strike me as a pro-business, pro-growth kind of candidate. Your thoughts on where we stand today? Well, there's nothing about leftist economics that is generally pro-business or pro-growth, and there's different shades of leftist economics. I actually think Kamala would be lucky if they branded her economic policy as Bidenomics, because as you know, she campaigned to something far to the left of that. She Mm. supported Medicare for all. She supported the Green New Deal. She supported getting rid of the filibuster in the Senate. And so, if anything, a pretty far left economic framework like Bidenomics is probably more moderate than she is. The switching to some of the recessionary fears underway was interesting that yesterday felt like the bond market was screaming at us for the Federal Reserve to cut rates to help boost the economy. Um, Interestingly, though, today the two year yield is right back up to 4%. What do you make of the bond market? Well, remember, 4%, that's 150 basis points less than the Fed funds rate. So that's still very near record territory of a spread between the two-year and the Fed funds. Uh, It hit 165, that spread, yesterday when the two-year was down to 385. Um, And so uh, I think that there's no question that the bond market is telling the Fed that there's a policy mistake underway. Mm -hmm. They most certainly are not going to cut rates in between meetings, nor should they. But they should have cut at the last meeting because the the lags that are involved in monetary policy are now catching up. Mm -hmm. And this is the hard part about doing discretionary monetary policy, where we're just sort of leaving it Mm -hmm. to the whims of a few academics around a conference room table to guess on what the economy needs rather than something more intelligent setting the price of money. So, David, do you think, given that gap, Do you think the Fed ought to do an emergency cut? I mean, is that kind of what's needed, given, as you say, this historical difference between where the Fed is and where bond markets are? No, because to do something in the middle of uh, meetings like this, it would panic markets and it signals that the Fed has no credibility, that they will capitulate to a couple days of a stock market drop, which isn't even that bad. Mm. And, and you look, you cut in between meetings uh, at COVID when Bear Stearns went down. I mean, these are significant world events to do it now because NVIDIA is having a bad month. Mm. The reason that the Fed needs to cut rates is because too many borrowers are going to face an escalation of cost of capital in the months ahead. Mm. The bond market knows that. And I promise you at the September meeting, the Fed will know that. David, given the action that we've seen was yesterday the washout and this the, you know, sort of rebound or is this just a dead cat bounce? Um, Nobody knows the answer to that, including me. And so I don't mind not knowing it. I just want to make sure everyone knows that no one else knows it either. (laughs) What I do believe is this, though, Jackie, the tech uh, valuations are nowhere near reasonable or cheap. Uh They have not hit value territory. Uh, NVIDIA dropped 25% and was still trading at 59 times earnings. So there's plenty of room to go further down, but I think it's not going to be an utter collapse. It's going to be a rotation that out of those overpriced kind of fun, big growth investments into more reasonably priced defensive. I think that rotation is what we're going to see now. Just quickly, as a cat lover, I'm hugely offended by Jackie's question. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Calling it a dead cat bounce. <laughs> if I called it a dead dog bounce, she would march <laughs> off stage. That's another day, David. I know it's a, a serious day, so I'll get back to a serious question with you. In terms of where we are with some of the recessionary fears and the bottoming out of the market, people have asked about the cross-asset signal. Typically, you see a big widening of credit spreads. You see more heightened volatility in the VIX like we saw yesterday. Are you seeing some of those other classic washout signals, um, or do you still need to see some widening um, of spreads, um, other cross-asset signals to make sure that we're really clear about where the bottom is? It's a great question. And the high yield spreads have widened about 60 to 70 basis points. But the investment grade corporate bond spreads barely moved 10 basis points. That's not the kind of spread widening that would indicate 
a real fundamental concern forward looking on economic conditions. I think you're going to get economic slowing. I don't think you're going to get a recession anytime soon. Uh, but credit spreads are a great indicator to look to. And we just haven't seen the kind of widening that would give us that that feeling yet. Mm. Even high yield, by the way, it was it was widening from very tight spreads. So it's probably healthy that credit is widened a little, but you didn't see any confirmation in the investment grade bond market at all. Mm. David Bonson, we so appreciate your time today. We'll have you back on soon. We do know we're going to see some volatility ahead. Thanks so much.